Hi and welcome to episode of Sean Lock Homes where we talk about dividend stocks every Friday. Now, in the last episode, I talked about a top-down approach where we look at the macro economy, understanding the trade war's impact and we eliminated sectors that may be affected. What happened is, we zoom into the telecommunication sectors and found AT&T. AT&T is not only a stock that has been giving consistent dividends and profits, it is also a stock with potential because AT&T owns Time Warner which owns HBO and HBO online streaming, in-demand streaming is something that's growing bigger and bigger. So thank you for all the comments and likes and because one of the comments asked, can you make a video explaining how to use a stock market? I don't know how to use it. Okay, because of this comment, I'll be showing you step by step how I will go from a bottom-up approach, screening for potential stocks that meet our criteria for Dividends Friday. Let's go! The website that I'll be demonstrating will be this thing called Finvis. Finvis is a stock screener and it's at finvis.com. Using a stock screener, we can screen for stocks that meets our criteria, eliminating those that doesn't pass. The first thing we do when we come to Finvis is to go to screener. And you can see there are many criteria here and I'll show you the ones that I'll be choosing. Before we do any screening, you can see there's 7,619 stocks. The first thing I'll choose is dividend yield. Now, when you mouse over the criteria, you can see the description. Let me explain. For example, a stock is giving 50 cents of dividend and we buy it at $10. This means based on our $10 investment, we are getting a 5% returns. So this is what we want to look for at least. So you go to dividend yield, you click on this tab, you can screen for stocks with high dividend, which is more than 5%. Once we click on this, the number of stocks has gone down to 981. This is pretty much still quite a number of stocks. So we'll go on to the next tab, which is fundamental right over here. When you click on fundamental, again, there are many choices. The ones that I look at first off is debt to equity. Again, when you mouse over, you can see that this is a measure of a company's financial leverage. What this means is basically how much the company is borrowing. These are things which is called debt. We want to compare it to their equity. Equity means the amount of cash they have, the amount of assets they have, it also equates to net worth. So a very good number to look at is 0.5. Under 0.5, what this means is the amount of debt they own is 50% of their equity. Now, after putting in this criteria, we are left with 112 stocks. Let's go and add in some more criteria. One criteria that I've been mentioning in my past videos in Dividends Friday is this criteria called net profit margin. Okay, net profit margin, again, if you mouse over, what it means is this, a company collects money from the customers. So for example, if they collect $100 from the customer, this $100 is used to pay for materials they use for their goods and services. It's also used to pay things like salary, like renter, and every other expenses they need to spend on. They also need to pay tax. So in the end, how much is it left? From $100, if it's left with $10, that's 10%. And 10% is the minimum amount of net profit margin that I'm looking for. So I'll be screening for stocks with over 10% in net profit margin. We are left with 51 stocks and this is pretty decent. Now it's very cliche to look from the top to the bottom. So let me just go all the way to page number three and see what do we have here. Well, just to demonstrate, I'll be looking at the stock that is right at the bottom, 51. And sometimes I like to look at stocks that are at the back of the pages is because these stocks are sometimes very, they are neglected, they may be very cheap. So let's take a look, Westwood Holdings Group. So currently, we have found a stock called Westwood Holding Groups. What do we do next? We analyze the stock by looking at their financials and understanding what the business is about. So how do we do that? Let's go. To analyze the stock, I will just type this in Google. Westwood Holdings, followed by the word Morningstar. Morningstar is a free website and they give us a financial data of listed companies all around the world. So this is Westwood Holding Group and a summarized version of their data will be here. Currently, the dividend yield is 9.94%. This is quite a high dividend yield. But what we want to do is to invest in companies that is not only giving high dividend yield, but they are giving it consistently. The current stock price now is $28.98. Let's go and look at their key ratios. 
their key ratios will tell us their past 10 years performance. So Westwood, if you can see here, their revenue is 43 million in 2009 and increased steadily to 122 million last year. The trading 12 months, which is the last latest results is 113 million. Looking at their dividends, you can see it is very stable, I would say, throughout the years. One thing that is of concern I can see right now is the payout ratio. You can see they are paying about 100% of payout ratio, 124%, uh, generally almost 80 to 90%. So they are paying out a lot of money that they have been making. Looking at the free cash flow per share, I can see that the dividends they are paying out is supported by the amount of free cash flow. So it, it looks quite stable actually. They have a lot more free cash flow than their earnings per share. Only recent years, they dropped by quite a bit. This may be the reason for the low price and causing the high dividend yield. But let's look at the other data. One data that I'd like to look at is the net margin. You can see net margin, I want it to be more than 10% and it is more than 10% throughout 10 years. Very profitable company. Now, for interest coverage, there's zero interest coverage, meaning to say, likely they have no debt. What does interest coverage mean? It means how much interest they can pay based on how much profit they make. If we see a dash, typically it means there's very little debt or no debt or no interest they need to pay on debt. Just to double confirm, I'll click on financial health and look at the debt to equity ratio. As you can see, throughout most of the years, there's no debt to equity ratio except recently there's 0.06. So it's still very healthy. The problem is I do not know what does this company do and do not have an assessment of whether it's a company that can sustain their profits and their dividends. So what I do is scrolling down in Morningstar, there's a company profile. You can see that Westwood Holdings Group is managing investment assets and providing services to their clients. Okay, another way you can do is, you can see that there's a website here which we will go and visit to know what they do more intimately. As you can see, they does investment management, wealth management, and these are the two things. Now, uh, another thing that I will actually look at is back to Morningstar their competitors. Because I may not know what Westwood is doing, but if they show me their competitors, so for example, BlackRock, you can see that BlackRock, we can understand it's an investment management company, an asset management company. Now we can understand Westwood a bit better. So just to compare, you can see that Westwood versus BlackRock, the dividend yield for Westwood is 9.8%, whereas BlackRock is only 2.87%. One thing very interesting that entices me right now is that the market capitalization. Westwood is 259 million in market cap, meaning to say it is a pretty small company compared to BlackRock and all of the other competitors, which is in billions of dollars. They have a Bank of New York Mellon and Blackstone. This gives me a certain perspective that Westwood has more potential to grow than BlackRock. But this also means that Westwood is slightly riskier because BlackRock being more reputable and being bigger, more customers may have more confidence in investing in BlackRock rather than Westwood. So this is both a pros and cons for being small. But again, I do not need Westwood to catch up to BlackRock in terms of billions of dollars but if Westwood just catch up slightly a bit to 500 million, my investment would have doubled. Now, just to show you the finances of BlackRock so that we can have a good comparison, we'll go to BlackRock and type Morningstar. Of course, in terms of the size, BlackRock is much bigger, from 4 over billion to 13 over billion. Uh, you can see that recently it's slowing down and there's the same trend we see in Westwood. So it seems like it's a very common trend these few years for asset management company to slow a bit. The reason is because the market is down recently. Okay, when companies like Westwood and BlackRock, how do they make money? Is they manage investments. And you can see Westwood is managing 16.8 billion. Well, compared to last year, they probably has dropped. Because stock market dropped, it means that the size of their asset that they're holding is actually smaller and the Asset management fee will be lesser this year as well. One thing that I noticed of BlackRock is the net margin is also way above 10%. In fact, these few years, it went up to 30%. Compared to Westwood, it is hovering only about 20 to 17 to 14%. So this may be one advantage that BlackRock has over Westwood. 
size in terms of asset under management may be an advantage. To manage more assets, you may not need to have more people. To understand Westwood more intimately, one thing we should do is to look at the financial reports of Westwood. So going to most of the websites, look at this thing called Investors Relation. You can just Google it offhand if you want to look for any particular specific websites or specific companies. And scrolling down, we have this thing called Annual Report. It's important for investors to look through their Annual Report to understand the company more intimately. As we read the Annual Report, do not just read it for fun. Read it with specific questions in mind. For example, how does this company make money? What is the age of this company? Meaning you say, what's the advantage of this company? What are the possible risks of this company? And that's where we can zoom in and find out more about the company. Okay, coming back to Westwood's financial report, 54% of their assets by account type are institutional and managed fund, wealth management and mutual fund. Okay, so a lot of the asset under management is by institution, which is pretty stable in the sense but the risk is also when institutional funds pull out, it will be a, a huge pull out in terms of uh, cash. But not so volatile uh, because most of the institution will stick to their companies for a while. This is impressive. The annual dividends of Westwood has been increasing for the past 16 to 17 years. Overall, I would say that this Westwood, it does not have very strong economic mode based on what I've seen. But in terms of financial performance, it has shown to be very strong. After we have analyzed the company, we have looked at the valuation. The dividend yield is 9 point something percent, which is very good valuation. The question we want to ask is, number one, are we very confident in the company? If we are and it's at a good valuation, we can go in and invest heavily. Now, in terms of Westwood, I can share with you right now, I'm not exactly sure what is the mode, what is the competitive advantage of this company. So I will not say that I'm super confident in this company. That brings us to the second level. Do we have a bit of interest in this company to invest a bit? The answer to me is yes. Westwood has been giving out dividends for the past 17 over years and at an increasing rate. They have shown good finances with no debt. So for me, I'm interested to invest in this company and watch it provide dividends for me. Of course, if you're not really confident or interested in Westwood and you want to focus your energy on other sectors that you're more familiar with, you can actually put Westwood on the watch list and study it even more before making a decision. If you analyze a company and it has bad finances, you are not confident in it, you can just dump it and look for other opportunity. So this is how we invest like Sean Locke, an investigative mindset, a mindset of curiosity, and we go through it step by step. I hope you have learned something this week and I look forward to your comments and more questions and I'll see you next Friday on the third episode of Sean Locke Homes. Goodbye.